Well, I want to talk about um, heart disease today. There's actually four basic types of heart disease. Um, two of them involve the coronary arteries. Uh, one is coronary artery disease itself, where you get a thickening of the walls, you get accumulation of what doctors call plaque. It could be uh, any one of or combination of four different things. It could be scar tissue, calcium, or the two early things that happen when you get clogged arteries. You get scar tissue and, and um, calcium building up. And then, of course, you get saturated fats and cholesterol building up over those areas to, to smooth out the blood flow to so having turbulence over that rough area. And this is caused by uh, inflammation. I actually wrote an article on that in 1971 comparing the coronary arteries of vegans, individuals that ate nothing but grains, vegetables, fruits, and nuts versus meat eaters. And the vegans had the worst clogged arteries because they were consuming seeds and oils that had oxidized uh, in the presence of air and, of course, uh, caused the inflammation. Now, I said in that summary of that article, which is published in an international uh, comparative pathology journal out of in Denmark, Acta Pathologica, um, 1971. They said that cholesterol has nothing to do with clogged arteries. It has to do everything with nothing. Okay, what causes the clogged arteries and, and coronary artery clogging and blockages is inflammation from fried foods and oils, which is now what's coming true today. Inflammation is the big word. Now they're slowly pulling away from the cholesterol thing. Secondly is coronary thrombosis, where you get a blood clot, from an omega-3 essential fatty acid deficiency, and then that's one that actually sued the FDA over, so you're able to say coronary thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, uh, thrombotic stroke, and deep vein thrombosis uh, can be caused by deficiencies of omega-3s, and by supplementation with omega-3s, you can actually reduce the risk. Then number three, uh, the next, next most common um, is what's called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, heart disease. Uh, my wife and I did 1,200 autopsies in kids under the age of 10 in Kishan Province, China, called Kishan's disease there, where they have cardiomyopathy, uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, heart disease caused by a selenium deficiency. We actually wrote a paper on that that's been published in Chinese and English in both American and Chinese medical journals. And then the most common cause of heart death in adults in the United States and Europe is congestive heart failure, which is a deficiency of a single vitamin. It's a deficiency of a single vitamin. Of course, doctors make a big hoo out of it, giving you all kinds of drugs, including digitalis, diuretics. They'll give you um, uh, things like um, whole heart monitors, uh, defibrillators, all kinds of stuff. They'll also put you in the heart transplant list. And I've treated people nutritionally that have all of these, they have all of these, and they've had them for years and years and years on the heart transplant list for three years. And you supplement with all 90 essential nutrients, and then you add extra of the appropriate nutrients, and then you take away the inflammatory instigating things like fried foods and processed meats with nitrates and nitrites, no oils, no sugars. And their cardiology team, not me, their cardiology team took them off the heart transplant list and off of 27 prescription drugs in five days after they started my nutritional program. Oh, yeah, I did also take them off of gluten. They were on a gluten-free diet also. That's the quickest I've ever gotten people off the heart transplant list. But some, you know, usually take 60, 90 days. And is it worth trying? Well, sure. Uh, what can hurt by taking the 90 essential nutrients plus, uh, you know, a few secret sauces? So this is very simple. Uh, we get people off a liver transplant list, kidney transplant list. The only thing I haven't figured out a way to do is get the doctors, medical doctors, off the brain transplant list. Okay? It's actually quite simple. Um, and... and the heart, of course, we only have one of them. Uh, to get a heart transplant um, disables you uh, to where you're, there's not many people. I don't think there's been anybody who lives to be 100 with a heart transplant. Um, and the people who get heart transplant, I've seen people get a second one and a third one. And um, this is the concept of computers. Uh, this is you put in a new SIM card when something burns out. But all you have to do is give the flesh all the known essential nutrients, 16 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 essential amino acids, 3 essential fatty acids, and you can reduce your risk of these diseases to almost zero. You can support and promote maintenance and repair by supplementing with all 90 essential nutrients. By, by promoting maintenance and repair, you reduce your risk of these diseases. You get off of the foods that actually inflict inflammation, causing coronary artery disease, um, exact a huge toll, uh, not only in the arteries, but also the cardiac muscle called myocardium, and then when you have a selenium deficiency, you have a deficiency of the single vitamin. And people are going to say, well, what's that single vitamin? Well, what I want you to do is call your FDI Young Associate 
I want you to get that trilogy of books, Let's Play Doctor, Let's Play Herbal Doctor, and the Passport Aromatherapy, and learn how to deal with all four of these heart diseases um, and using vitamins and minerals and trace minerals and rare earths, amino acids, fatty acids, herbs, aromatherapy oils. This is so simple. I have ninth grade dropouts who can teach you how to support and promote a healthy and happy heart through diet and supplementation. And I have ninth grade dropouts and high school graduates and uh, the oldest of seven kids of sharecroppers who had to get GEDs because they were illiterate, uh, that these people can help you stay off the heart transplant list. They can help you prevent heart disease. Where medical doctors, all they do is give you a physical stick your their finger and all your, the various orifices of your body, charge you an outrageous amount of money, and then two weeks later you die of a heart attack. Well, they haven't prevented anything by doing a physical. They're just looking to see if they have some diagnosable disease they can put you on a, a drug part and get a kickback. And so contact your FDI or you can give the associate and actually learn how to support and promote mates and repair of your heart and live 25 to 50 years longer. We'll be back with Dead Doctors Don't Lie for these messages. Okay, Doug, what pearls of wisdom do you have for us today? Well, I thought we'd talk a bit about heart disease as I've got a story here that was published in the Journal of American Medical Association. Got it from CNN. Headlined, women more likely to die in the hospital after a heart attack, according to a study. Say every 34 seconds, somebody in the U.S. has a heart attack. It's the leading uh, number one killer, is what they say here, according to the American Heart Association. Yeah, they said a study of heart attack patients finds that women are more, more likely than men to show up at the hospital without class, uh, the classic chest pain symptoms. And the study also shows that they're more likely to die in the hospital following a heart attack. And they looked at data from about a million people from the National Registry of Myocardial Infarction. And uh, it's a large national database of heart attack patients from about 1,600 acute care hospitals in the U.S. Women comprise about 42% of those patients. And they say... Uh, this uh, study was actually sponsored by Genentech Incorporated. They make anti-clotting drugs. And they looked at uh, a sex, age, and heart attack symptoms in this study. They said recognizing a heart attack uh, in the early on uh, it helps to save heart tissue as without blood flow and oxygen, the muscle begins to die and often scars and then can damage and impair heart function. They say patients without chest pain or discomfort tend to, uh, you know, get to the hospital a little later and are treated less aggressively and are almost twice uh, more, more likely to die than those who have the more atypical symptoms. They say heart attack, of course, is the chest pain, discomfort, nausea, fatigue, and pressure in the lower chest or belly, all of that from the American Heart Association. They say the study women uh, presenting heart attacks were older than men, averaging about 74 years of age, while men were around 67. Women were also less likely to have chest pain or discomfort. 42% of the women had no chest pains compared to just 30% of men without chest pains. They also say that younger women were less likely to have uh, pain symptoms uh, compared to men the same age. And in hospital deaths for women was 14.6%, almost 15%, compared to just a little over 10 for men. So you're in bad shape if you're a woman and you have a heart attack and go to the hospital. Well, here's where prevention comes in, Doug. If women were to take the 90 essential nutrients, throw in the extra selenium, throw in the ultimate daily tablets, and throw in the de-stress capsules, they're going to get all the nutrients we know uh, support and promote healthy maintenance repair of the heart muscle and the, and the cardiovascular system, including coronary arteries, brain arteries, kidney arteries, arteries in the legs. And if they stay away from the bad things, the fried foods, the processed meats with nitrates and nitrites, the oils, um, they're going to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease to almost zero. Um, there, there's no reason that cardiovascular disease is not genetic, and anybody who tells you that it's genetic or is attached to any gender is actually nonsense. It has to do with the way people eat. Uh, you look at the way men eat, of course, uh, more of them get heart disease than women. It's just the, the mortality rate is percentage is higher in women. The, the death rate is higher because doctors know to look for heart disease in middle-aged men. Uh, when they come in the hospital, they, they check that out first, no matter what the symptoms are. And women, when they come in, the first thing they think of is, oops, menopause, Right and they shunt them off to an internist instead of a cardiologist in the emergency room. And um, believe me, uh, if everybody, including men, were to supplement with the 90 essential nutrients, throw in the ultimate daily tablets, the selenium, and the um, de-stress capsules, again, the odds of them getting heart disease reduced almost zero. And I do this. I don't have any history of heart disease. 
Uh, I can run, I mean, from one end of an airport to the other without getting breathless carrying two briefcases. And I never go to a gym, but I know my coronary arteries are open. I mean, that's my stress test. That's my treadmill test is running through the airports. And um, it's a matter of prevention. That's the best thing you can do. Why wait until you're in a crisis and dying to say, hey, I'm a, a woman. Be sure you check me out for heart disease. Just don't get it. And to avoid it, you've got to take care of your heart, avoid all the bad foods, supplement with all the known essential nutrients, support and promote maintenance repair, avoid damage. You won't get in the emergency room for a heart attack. We'll be back after these messages. Let's go to New York. Ed, Robert, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Hello, Robert. You're on the air. Good afternoon, Doc. How you doing? Okay, sir. How can I help you? Okay. Uh, my niece has MERS disease. She's 11 years old. She weighs 80 pounds. She's on a ventilator, and her muscles are deteriorating. Okay, and you have to back up a little bit. What disease does she have? MERS, M-E-R-S. M-E-R-S? M as in Mary, E as in everyone, R as in Robert, F as in Frank. Okay, or MRSA? Is it MRSA? Uh, all I got was MRSA. My, yeah, it's probably MRSA, methicillin-resistant staphylococcus. Okay. Um, yeah, this is a infection that uh, kids can get in, in daycares. It's an infection they can get at a doctor's office. It's a very uh, resistant sta- staph uh, infection, resistant to drugs. Um, it, it, is she conscious or is she unconscious? She's conscious. Uh, she's on a ventilator. Mm-hmm. She's a so you, and she's, got, she's got a MRSA pneumonia? Right. Okay. Well, um, uh, when did she go into the hospital? Um, she's not in the hospital. She's home. Oh, she's at home. Okay. How long has she been? Uh, how long has she had this infection? Um, about two years, two to three years now. Two or three years. Yes. Oh. All right. Well, somebody needs to go to jail <laughs> if she's had that for two years. Um, okay. Uh, here's what we need to do. She weighs, you say, 80 pounds? Yeah, she, is she eating by mouth or is she being fed by a G-tube? She's being fed by the G-tube. Okay. Well, one of the things I uh, want to make sure of is she does not get, uh, she does not get Insure or any of these other canned um, diets because they contain corn oil and corn sugar, neither of which is good for her, particularly with um, brain damage. Um, she needs to be off of all things that have corn oil in it, okay? So you need to read labels, and if she's getting Insure or these other canned uh, meals, they, they need to be replaced. And what I would replace it with, we actually have a shake, uh, which is made from a, a whey, which is a milk protein and um, soy protein mix, it's called Slender, uh, Slender FX Shake, but it's, if you add water to it, it will actually um, be a weight loss. But if you add uh, heavy whipping cream to it to reconstitute it, it now becomes something that supports healthy brain management. So once you do that, throw two eggs in there, whip that up, and that's going to be you know, one of her basic pieces of her diet. And hang on, I'll give you the supplement program after these messages. with Dead Doctors Don't Lie on the ZBS Radio Network. Dr. Joel Wallach here for FDI Activity and 90 for Life Crusade. And Doug, let's go right back to New York and Robert. Okay, just need a little clarification here. We've been looking around and uh, Doug's done some uh, uh, research for me here. Um, is, is this spelled M-E-R-R-F as in Frank or yes. M-E-R-S? F as in Frank. F as in Frank, Okay. Well, uh, there is a, does, did this child have epilepsy or seizures early in life? Uh, not that I know of, Doc. Okay. Um, and w- what age was she diagnosed? Uh, age nine. Okay, and how old is she now? Eleven. Okay. So she was normal until about age nine, and then suddenly she woke up one morning and had this, or was she sick for a while, or... Yeah, uh, sick for a while, then diagnosed with that. Okay. And um, did she have pneumonia, or did she just get muscle weakness? 
muscle weakness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, this, this is a little bit different story than my original thinking. If this is Murph's disease as opposed to MRSA, okay, um, this could be, uh, they, they, meaning the medical system, call it a mitochondrial disease, which means I don't know what it is, and so I'm going to blame it on the mitochondria. Uh, they tend to think it's an autoimmune disease sort of thing. And basically, it, it just, on the face of it, I've never heard uh, of MERRF, MRF's disease, but um, just from the description, it could be a form of, of um, either muscular dystrophy or even uh, MS, multiple sclerosis, in these young kids. Um, seizures, and when you look in the dictionary, under the seizures tend to be a feature of it. And so that raises my little red flags a little bit if she, if she didn't have seizures. Okay. Um, so let, let's kind of go both directions here until I find out more. It would be useful to have the child's parents call me so I could ask them more details, okay? Okay. In the meantime, let's keep going here. At um, 80 pounds, I would uh, get her off of all those oils, you know, things like Ensure. Uh, that still holds true here. No Ensure and none of the other canned meal replacers. I would go with the Nature's Way or the, um, that's the FDI Longevity's, uh, what we used to call Nature's Way. It's now called Slender FX Shake. And uh, since it's a G tube, it doesn't matter if it's vanilla or chocolate because you can't taste it. And I would uh, throw in, again, uh, say two eggs. I would make it, uh, reconstitute it with heavy whipping cream instead of water. And it may have to put some water in it to make it thin enough to get through the G-tube. But you had to whip it up with it because of the two eggs that are going in each serving. Then um, I would give her one healthy start pack per month at 80 pounds. Uh, cut it in half. That would allow her to have one tablespoon of the Osteo FX Plus in the morning and one tablespoon of the Osteo FX Plus at dinner, one scoop of the Beyond Tangerine Nutri-Crystals at breakfast and one scoop at dinner, and then the three EFAs, uh, she could have all at once, or if she's fed three times a day, she could take one of these capsules with each meal. Obviously, they have to be punctured and put in some of the liquids that go through the G-tube. I would also give her um, three of the de-stress capsules a day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the evening, and they have to be opened up in the powder, put in the liquid that's in, you know, given to her through the G-tube. And then um, I would also give her the selenium. I would give her two selenium a day, one in the morning, one in the evening. They have to be opened up and the powder put in uh, the, the, the shake or in some of the other liquids she's getting. And I would give her, uh, as part of the juices, I would give her what we call a Z-radical. I would give her two ounces, start out with two ounces of Z-radical a day, one sort of mid-morning, one in mid-afternoon. And it could be added to water or just, you know, given by itself. But I would think you'd want to add it to water so you maximize getting it all in. And then um, have the parents call me, but this is where I would start with that child. But make sure you eliminate the bad stuff, which includes Ensure and the other canned meal replacers. We'll be back after these messages. Let's head to Burita Valley, California. And Charles, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Hello, Charles. You're on the air. All right. How you doing? Okay, sir. This is the doctor, right? Yep, this is the doctor. What can I do for you? Uh, yes, uh, I've been diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer, and uh, they want to operate. Okay. When and were you I diagnosed? Was, uh, I was diagnosed about a month ago. Okay. And uh, have you ever had any other type of cancer? No, uh, not no. Okay. And how old are you, sir? Uh, uh I'm uh, 61. Okay, and how much do you weigh? I weigh uh, 160 now. All right. Did you lose some weight? I gained some weight. Oh, you gained weight. Okay. Have I you had treatment? Have you had either chemotherapy or radiation treatment yet? Uh, no, I hadn't had none of that yet. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, what I want you to do is go on the Internet and look up Harvard Medical School prostate cancer recommendations, that kind of thing, because Harvard Medical School said um, prostate cancer should not be treated. It should be observed first, right, uh, because uh, most men never die of prostate cancer. When you have prostate cancer and you take treatment, the treatment kills you. The, the prostate cancer doesn't. About three years ago, they came out with the same finding. And then 
There was a big article in the USA Today which said prostate cancer shouldn't even be called cancer. It should be called prostate dysplasia or some other disease. Uh, they say because the doctors use the word prostate cancer and they kind of yell the cancer in the patient's face, um, most men are scared enough they begin immediate treatment. And then they die from the treatment. Where only 10% say, well, I'm just going to observe this for a while. The ones who actually observe the cancer instead of getting treatment for it live either longer or don't die from it. Um, the, and, of course, there was a panel of doctors who looked at that and said, yeah, the, the, the um, term cancer should be removed from prostate cancer because it never metastasizes to the liver, the lungs, the brain, which is what kills you when you have, like, breast cancer, colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, lung cancer, those kind of things. A lot of skin cancers go to the brain, the lungs, and the liver. They destroy those organs, and that's what kills you. Um, whereas prostate cancer does not do that. And so um, it's something uh, people, you know, men uh, who died at 85 from car wrecks or heart attacks will have some prostate cancer in the prostate the size of a head of a pin, but certainly the prostate cancer never killed them, and they may have been had it for 30, 40 years and never grew any. And so personally... I would never opt for surgery or treatment uh, from chemotherapy or radiation. Uh, personally, what I would do if I was ever diagnosed with prostate cancer were to be to get rid of all the bad stuff that actually initiated prostate cancer. That means no fried foods, no processed meats with nitrates, nitrites. That means deli slices, sandwich meats, sausage, ham, bacon, bologna, salami, pastrami, pepperoni, jerky, corned beef, spam, other canned meats, hot dogs, all that stuff would go. No oils. It means no margins, no mayonnaise, no salad dressings, no cooking oils. And I like canned fish, uh, so I would have my canned fish packed in water or mustard or tomato sauce rather than canned fish that's packed in oil. And by giving up those things, um, you're going to um, uh, slow down the growth of any cancer. You're going to allow the immune system to do its job and protect you from the cancer. And then uh, for somebody who weighs 160 pounds, and having been diagnosed with cancer, and I'd get another opinion because many times you get a false uh, uh, diagnosis. You get an incorrect diagnosis. So it wouldn't hurt for another pathologist to give you a second opinion of the diagnoses. But at any rate, the supplement program would go like this. Uh, two healthy start packs per month. That's going to give you the basic platform of all the known essential nutrients. That's going to support and promote a healthy and happy immune system, which is your best friend when you're truly diagnosed with cancers. And that would allow you to have one ounce of the Osteo FX Plus at breakfast and dinner, two scoops of the Beyond Tain Tangerine Nutri Crystals at breakfast and dinner, three of the EFA Plus at breakfast and dinner. And that's going to give you this platform of the known essential nutrients, again, to support maintenance and repair of all tissues, including maintaining and supporting a healthy immune system. Then at your size, I would take in nine of our selenium capsules a day, three at breakfast, three at lunch, three at dinner, and they will support your immune system and also help recycle glutathione, which is one of the best friends you have. It's, it's the most powerful antioxidant produced by the human body, glutathione. You don't need to supplement with it because the human body makes it, but by adding the selenium, not only does the selenium support the immune system, uh, particularly in the case of uh, prostate cancer, uh, it also helps recycle the glutathione molecules. They, they don't get burned up as they kill or um, neutralize, probably a better word, neutralize uh, cancer cells or free radicals which drive cancer. Then, in addition, I would get your ORAC points, O-R-A-C, oxygen radical absorption capacity. I get your ORAC points above 100,000 each day, and that's, again, going to support your immune system. You can do that with our Cell Shield RTQ. Cell Shield RTQ, each two capsules gives you 15,800 um, ORAC points, so you might have to take eight a day um, before breakfast, before dinner. Uh, it's called Cell Shield RTQ. And then also another option is uh, our pieces of dark chocolate the size of a pat of butter. We have two. Uh, one is the triple truffle chocolate. Um, if you like truffles and dark chocolate, really, really tastes good. I mean, this is one of my favorites, our triple truffle chocolate. Uh, you could take six of those pieces a day. Uh, or our triple treat chocolate, triple treat chocolate, or triple trouble, say that fast, triple truffle chocolate, and um, this is going to get your auric points above 100,000. 
And so, again, stay away from all the bad things, the fried foods, the processed meats, the oils, and um, supplementing properly. Uh, you're going to have uh, the system that's going to support and promote healthy maintenance repair of the prostate. And then uh, call me every couple of weeks. Let me know what your decision is on whether or not you're going to get treatment. I would certainly take the effort, make the effort to get a second opinion before you make a decision on what you're going to do or not do. Give me a call every couple of weeks, and certainly call me as you get more information and make your decision. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. Let's head to Delaware, Maryland. Ed Tamara, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Tamara, you're on the air. Yes, good afternoon, Hi. Dr. Wallach. Hi. How can I, I, have help? A two, I have a two-year-old daughter that suffers from partial forces of the colosseum, microsepathy, and cerebral palsy. Okay. She was weeks premature. Okay, she was born with his, with his cerebral palsy, correct? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, c- cerebral palsy, whether it's in the corpus callosum or the cerebellum, uh, which are the two most common locations, um, is a birth defect caused by lack of nutrients early on in pregnancy when the brain was developing. This is not something that can actually be fixed with postnatal supplementation. This is preventable but not fixable. However, the child needs all 90 essential nutrients, so the 90 essential nutrients are appropriate for body weight. She can live to be 100. Be back after these messages. with Dead Doctors Don't Lie on the ZBS Radio Network. Dr. Joel Wallach here for FDI Longevity and 90 for Life Crusade. And, Doug, let's go to callers. Let's go to Beaver Dam, Arizona. And, Celeste, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Hello, Celeste. You're on the air. Hi. Hi. How can I help you? I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, and I was wondering if you had a treatment for that. Absolutely. Um, How much do you weigh? I weigh 165. Okay, and how old are you? 25. Okay. It's a little unusual to be diagnosed with MS your age. Usually it's sort of like in the late 30s, 40s, and 50s. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so they diagnosed this by CAT scan or MRI? Um, with the MRI. Okay, so they saw the lesions in your brain. Mm-hmm. Correct. Okay. Now, the part of the brain that's damaged when you have MS is the white matter of the brain, the myelin, Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Now, what symptoms do you have? Do you have, like, visual blurriness or numbness in your hands and feet? What you got? Um, well, when I, first, when I first noticed that something was wrong, my right side of my face was numb mm-hmm. and a droopy. Okay, and almost like a Bell's palsy? Yeah, kind of like Bell's palsy. So I thought it was Bell's palsy, but they said that it wasn't. Okay. All right, well, here we go. And I've also- I've only got, do you have anything else like diabetes or heart disease or arthritis? No. Okay, here we go. We only got a little bit of time, so if I don't get it all done now, I want you to call me tomorrow, okay? We need to give up all the bad stuff that caused this. Number one, no fried foods. No processed meats with nitrates and nitrites. No oils. That means no uh, margins, no mayonnaise, no salad dressings, no cooking oils, no extra, extra, extra virgin olive oil, no coconut oil, no oils, no insure. No oils. Then, um, no carbonated drinks with meals, an hour before, during, an hour afterwards. The supplement program will go like this. Two healthy start packs per month, one full dose of each of the three products at breakfast, one full dose of each of the three products at dinner. Those two healthy start packs will cover that. I want you to um, eat uh, six eggs a day. They have to be one-minute poached eggs or one-minute boiled eggs or soft, soft scrambled eggs and butter. No margins, no oils for cooking the eggs. That's six a day. That's to rebuild the myelin in your brain. Then I also want you to take six selenium a day, two at breakfast, two at lunch, two at dinner. That'll be um, two bottles per month of the ultimate selenium. I want you to take six of the de-stress capsules a day. That's three at breakfast, three at dinner. And then I want you to get your auric points, your antioxidant points, above 100,000 per day. You're going to do that with the Cell Shield RTQ. Uh, each two capsules has 15,800 auric points. Uh, I want you to take uh, 8 to 10 of those a day and or uh, 6 of our either triple treat or triple truffle chocolates per day. It's going to get your auric points over 100,000. Now, 
I want you to sit down and make a list of every little thing you can think of, no matter how minor, even if you have a little twitch in your left upper eyelid, uh, whatever it is. Um, your bowel movement schedule, you're having one bowel mo- movement every three days or whatever. Also, do you have any skin problems? No. Okay, did you have any asthma or uh, uh, chronic bronchitis as a kid? I did have asthma. Okay, you need to be on a gluten-free diet. No wheat, barley, rye, or oats. No wheat, barley, rye, or oats. You can have rice, you can have millet, you can have flax, you can have buckwheat, you can have uh, sweet potatoes, you can have squash, all the vegetables. Plus, in addition to your eggs, you need animal protein of either beef or lamb or chicken or fish, whatever it is, and all your other meals. But uh, you do need to get on a gluten-free diet if you had asthma as a kid. You need to be on a gluten-free diet, no wheat, barley, rye, or oats. That's going to maximize the absorption of the nutrients. And I want you to call me every two weeks. I want you to go down the list uh, of symptoms that you make every two weeks before you call me and see which ones are staying the same, which ones are getting worse, and which ones are getting better, okay? How long will it take to notice? Well, I've seen people recognize benefit in four to six weeks. I've seen people take three months. It depends on the rate of damage, and I'd have to look at the MRIs to determine, to give you a better answer than that. But usually within four to six weeks, you can actually see something good happening. Give me a call. Okay, we'll be back another day. Thank you, everybody. Really great testimonies and great questions today. God bless each and every one of you. God bless our troops. Thank you so much, Doug and and Easton. Superlative job as usual. God bless our troops. God bless our Navy SEALs. And God bless America.